come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a movie review podcast that comes at you every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not. And actually, it probably actually shows up early Saturday morning, but whatever. In the land of make-believe, every Saturday we get together down here in a dank, dark basement. We watch a movie that's usually chosen round-robin by one of the internet radio superstars, including... Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. But this week, we're doing something special because it's the new year. And we watched a movie that was chosen by... You. You. That's right. You, <laughs> the listener. Dear Brailler. Uh, yes. So what we did, for those of you joining us late, we uh, <laughs> a, through the month of December, we were asking for you to submit uh, movies that we should watch. Uh, you did. Thank you very much. We had a couple dozen. Wait, wait, don't thank them yet. Yeah. Like, let's not, <laughs> let's, let's, let's not, see this through let's first. Let's not thank anybody <laughs> too soon. Well, thanks for it. Well, yeah, but uh, everybody submitted. So yes, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah, so yeah. Thank you for we the appreciate. Submission. I'm not going to thank. We appreciate you doing that, so that we wouldn't have to come well, up maybe, with shit of our own. Maybe you have something against the voters. That could be different than the submitters. Who knows? But then maybe people yeah. voted, and we are going with the top four vote getters. Right. We're just going to watch them. We're not even going to tell you what they are, except you know, obviously you clicked on this episode, so you know. Uh, so tonight's movie was suggested by. Two listeners, mm. uh, Brian Putke and the Shirt Twins, which could be <laughs> that could be three listeners, oh. and they could be a band. I love it. I love Brian it. Brian Putke and, oh. the, and shirt the Shirt Twins. twins. <laughs> that is that is definitely. I, I hope that's a one band. collective yeah. band. Yeah, I really hope so. Yeah, I love that. Um, <laughs> remember, so Detention is a movie from the year. 2011. 2011, yeah. Okay. And it was directed by Joseph Kahn, who also directed uh, Torque. Torque. Uh, <laughs> I never saw Torque. Explains a, a lot. I, I didn't see Torque did. either. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, why? I, just I, heard about I did it. because Adam Scott wouldn't stop name dropping it on a podcast I listened to. So I tried watching it and then I was like, oh, he's just in it. That's why he wants me to watch it. And uh, I could have said good. Yeah. I remember it. Have, it's like a motorcycle version of, uh, of uh, Fast and the Furious, but it has the dude from the ring in it. Yeah. And he kept like, yeah, he kept yeah. saying like, if you like Fast and the Furious, watch my movie Torque was like the whole push <laughs> the whole time. And I'm like, what? Well, apparently <laughs> Joseph Kahn hated Ooh. making Torque. So Joseph Kahn is also a music video director. Very much so. Yeah. He's got like over a hundred music video credits. Yeah. Like literally any big music video of the past. 20 years he's directed including artists like taylor Sha- swift shakira he did a bunch of hers like literally any top 40 yeah, artists of the Gaga, last 20 Beyonce, 30 years say yeah. eminem maroon yeah. five britney spears imagine he, dragons mm. yeah pretty much everything so he's a music video uh, a director he also directed bodied which one bodied which is a movie i've heard about for the past year that say it again bodied body o-d-i-e-d bodied nope never heard of it i've heard of it got past me well, he uh, self-financed this movie. Oh, yeah! Don't off say off of the profits that he ten million dollars of his own money he put into detention wow. because it meant that much to him. He also directed the you've all seen it, the Power Ranger short. Oh, oh yeah. the oh, famous yeah. Power Ranger yeah, short. Yeah, the famous Power Ranger short. Yeah, oh, with see. maybe with, he should had, stick to uh, doing that. We didn't. It had um, what's his name in it? James Vanderbeek. Oh yeah, that's right. Right, yeah, yeah James Vanderbeek yeah. in it. Didn't it yeah. also have uh, Katie Sackhoff. Yeah, Katie yeah. Sackhoff was yeah. yeah. from yeah. Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, yeah, Katie yeah. Sackhoff. Yeah. yeah so this is like that. a. It was like an Ooh. R-rated Power yeah. Rangers awesome. short. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really Power was. Rangers I was all for that short R-rated yeah. film, and then they made an actual film, and which was nothing like that. Short, no, but still decently entertaining. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, but detention. Detention. I'm exhausted. I it, mean, oh, this I'm is so where tired. I'm we just watched the movie, yep. folks. Oh. Uh, and uh, and you said he put ten million of his own in this. Yeah. Uh, it has Passion Project all stank all over oh, it. Yeah, yeah, it's- yeah. Because yeah. after the main studio job of Torque, he was like, "Nope, I'm gonna. I'm an artist. I'm gonna go off and yep. make my art. I'm an artist. Yep. So he <laughs> says that he. Uh, so the guy, I think, was almost forty years old when he made this film. 
okay. but mm-hmm. because okay. of the uh, his attachment to music culture, he says, you know, that's the thing. He says most people, and this is, I actually agree with him. I think most people, uh, you discover what you like musically by like the age of 25, maybe at the max. And then you kind of listen to that same stuff or variations of it for the rest of your life. (laughs) Yeah. I would say when you're like a teenager, you're discovering it all for the first time on your own. Like you're developing your own taste, but yeah, it's pretty much refined and cemented by the time you hit your mid twenties. I think I'm cemented in, well, uh, uh, how old is he? You say he he was 39 when he made this movie. Okay. Or when there's, it a came of, out. there's a lot of there's a lot of pop uh, uh, Backstreet Boys, uh, NSYNC. Yeah, well, that's why there's an influence. When Michaela was saying that you know somebody had looked up stuff of the eighty of the nineties, I'm like, well, I know that he was lived through it. So how much it doesn't of that stuff feel was like he did, did a Backstreet it, Boys. He it did feels Kelly very Clarkson, surface level. He did Britney Spears, Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah. So what? Uh, Yep. What's what's detention all about? Give us a setup for this movie. I can't. Well, I can't fucking do seat. it. Yeah, you I didn't can't. want to let Sean there, so now you're you know, right. This I didn't pick your fault. I didn't of pick the this chair. movie. Um, I, I, you're sitting in the chair. We're going to before. <laughs> this movie is about everything and nothing, and it can't decide what it wants to focus on. Did I? I feel like the description I read of this movie is wildly inaccurate. What was that? Um, that Cinderella, which is this like slasher movie character, is loose in this high school killing people. That is, sold a slasher movie. that is maybe about. three seconds of screen time in this whole movie. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot. This movie has, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't even think we could talk maybe about the We're plot. We're not going to be able to talk about everything. The plot because it Whoa. operates like right out of the gate. It is running at like the speed of light, right? This is hyper... Uh, what are you going to hypersensitive? Hyperactive. Hyperactive. Thank it's like you watching a movie on three speed. Yeah. It's- <laughs> yeah. All the cuts are very fast. The camera is constantly moving. I appreciated actually some of these camera moves. Sure. I was, but it's, it's mm-hmm. very much of like, you know, a music video director. He just maintains yeah. a you know that level of energy yeah. for what is it like an hour and a half it felt like so, yeah. almost two hours oh, it felt like a longer. long movie. it's gonna be like an hour and 43 minutes is what i I'm think it is 82 minutes I'm i just go. love 82 you do i'm gonna say hour 43 i'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait, hold on. all right here we go uh, oh hour 33 no way I was, no I was that's actually no, gonna there's no way it was minutes. that long oh, yeah. no, <laughs> no way, way. no way Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it feels so much longer. If it felt way longer than that. Longer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. It did. Yes. Well, it's because you saw like three movies in that amount of time. Probably, uh, right? Three movies, like six shorts, <laughs> couple <laughs> music videos too. We had, we had a nice little uh, like the fly short in the middle of mm-hmm. this movie for no sure, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. payoff. No reason for it. It is a massive. I can massive. I mean, it's a. Like a, uh, uh, it's it not a pop culture artifact, but it lives. Its memory is ninety, specifically nineties, and a little bit of the eighties, but mostly nineties pop culture. Right, and it's just vomiting it up at like in projectile, you know, fashion at the speed of sound. Mm-hmm. It is a yeah, movie it's... of the moment you're watching it, and not before and not after. Oh, it is of right then. That it you're is bracketed, it. like nothing exists before this this exact moment. And nothing exists after it. As we in, are just yeah. what are you in saying? this one retention moment. of it will eventually like fade because gone. there's no, nothing really. To, no, gone. I'm just saying it, the movie itself doesn't have its own memory of minutes before it or minutes after. No, it, it's, also it's, it's not is, reacting it's off. Of, no. it's not reacting off of anything before, mm-hmm. and it's not thinking about anything that's going to come. It's just like <laughs> yeah. what's right now. Mm-hmm. It almost really, literally says this in the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At a certain point, yeah. it does. I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but yeah. it's really a love of right now. It's also a very meta movie where the characters talk directly to the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, they make comments on stuff that's happening in the movie. Is There's it a lots comedy? of cool motion graphics coming up. I, oh, liked, yeah. I liked that part of it. Very Scott sure, pilgrim sure, sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. But like a thousand times more frequently than Scott Pilgrim yes. did it. <laughs> Is this um, a picture, a snapshot inside the mind of a high school student in 2011? I don't think so. I, I, I was thinking the whole time I watched this, who the fuck is this for? Who is this movie for? Yeah. High school students in 2011. I was not that far out of high school in 2011. <laughs> and I don't get do not. Gra- I can't grasp onto this movie at all. There's nothing for you to grasp onto. Because it was moving too to. fast? Yeah, it's moving too fast. It's, it's going. It has no focus. It has 
I don't know what it's trying to say because I don't think it's trying to say anything. But it's it, the it acts like generation. it's really it needs Adderall. Yeah, it acts like it has something really smart to say, but it doesn't. And it none of these characters feel and maybe in it any does. sense real or dimensional. Is it trying to do that? That's the question. That is the question. Is there, well, do we have why, an answer? Why is everyone talking so fast and snappy and like just vomiting out these references? Like for what? Like what's the point of that? If you don't like this one, we got another one coming up in two seconds. But like, it's like the characters aren't even like speaking to each other. They're just waiting for the other one to stop talking so they can say what they're going to say. Oh yeah, they're not they're, characters. Yeah, but no, maybe no. that's not the intention of the movie. I, mean, I, I don't know what it is. So. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know what well, the intention. This of the is movie what is. we're going to we're going to crack this. This is what oh, the job of the uh, Saturday I, Night Freak okay. Show. It's a big undertaking. You're you're putting on the table. Guys. Yeah, well, Ooh. I'm trying to break this thing down and like just what's the general overall plot. I mean, the it's true there is a slasher movie in this movie. Where this character called Cinderella Mm -hmm. is wandering around uh, killing the students, right? So I don't know what you take that as a metaphor, as some kind of, uh, you know, basically that life is fleeting and you got to live life right now. And there is no, uh, because I think at the end, the the general uh, theme of the film wraps up being like, you know, that you, the only way to change the past is to live right now. You can't live in the past, right? Even though the whole movie's packed full of nostalgia. Literally, this whole town lives in the past. Li- there are whole towns obsessed with the 90s. Yeah, yeah. They have a 90s themed prom. Yeah. Like, <laughs> is the, but the movie, like in its plotting, right, or theme, is arguing against nostalgia, saying, like, basically, you have to make the world uh, that you want right now because. There's time travel in this. Okay, we got it. It's some point. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here you go. Pull so points. let's bullet point this. Yeah. There's time Break travel. Down, Colin. There's aliens. Yep. There's fly. Slasher. The fly. Like literally the fly of the movie. Like then a little short of There's a lot of, of like breakfast club kind of uh, dynamics yep. or whatever between. Some like of- mean girls type teen stuff going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. All right, but let's focus. Okay, so our main character. <laughs> this movie no, never does. Don't we don't have to. to. Focus. Yeah. Tell them no, 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 to focus. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. But we we have to. We are going to focus this movie down and break it down into what it in the sum of its parts. So there's a main character whose name I think is Riley, mm-hmm. yep. who is the girl with the cast on yep. her foot, and so she is uh, basically in this movie. Well, yeah, but in this movie, she's, uh, well, Josh, Josh Hutcherson from the, uh, Hunger, the Hunger Games, Games. Yep. he's also in this film. I think he was an executive producer. He on was. It, so probably had a lot to do with getting it made. Yep. I understand why he does a TV show, Future Man, now. It's a way better version of this right. movie. Is it? Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, he's like the class, how would you, what would you, what, what archetype is him? Cool is he? slacker. He's the cool slacker. He's the cool slacker. Yeah, like everybody likes him. She's the deep girl, right? Who's basically right. Uh, lives for a cause. She yeah, has a yeah. cause. She's, she's championing. The, she's the um, from the community. Vegan. The community. Uh, a Britta. She's, she's the Britta. Britta. She's the Britta. <laughs> yeah. She's the Britta of this movie. Yep. yep. At least season one Britta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, Sander. Sander S. Sanders. Yep. Is the like the the, the geeky incel best nerd. friend? Yeah, the, yeah. Basically, he's the <laughs> incel nerd. Yes, that's very true. And so those are basically the three main characters, aside from uh, what the hell was her name? Imogen. No, it was uh, Ioni. Ioni. Yes. Ioni. Ioni. Yes. Who I was sitting there the whole time looking at her, going like, "Man, I have seen her she before really somewhere." I figured out what it is. Mm. She's Kmart in the Resident Evil movies. What? Sure. Okay. Okay. Take your word for it. This is, Colin's the only one who's uh, actually, I think, made that journey in yeah. watching all of them. Yep. All yeah. of them. Yes. And probably more than once. And those are some bad yes. movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. So, yeah. Uh, Kmart. What is, okay, what is Kmart's I have no purpose idea in those she, movies? What is she? Why is she Kmart? She's just called Kmart. Why? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think there is. It's just like, this is my friend Kmart. Like, hey, Kmart. And like, hey. And then there's a bunch of shooting and there's monsters. Uh, and then you're on to the next movie. about those movies. Just yeah. I don't know who Kmart is. Um, I don't know if I can do it. I don't think I can break this movie down into a plot. I'm no. trying my, my you, damn you try, to like. Because if you, you got find, a good if you're start. Ru- Colin, if you're a rudderless, then I don't know where we're <laughs> yeah, going. Yeah. You've got to steer man. us through this shit. Yeah. Well, what's the uh, the first 
like major plot point because we see like you oh, know there's a that girl was at three the years ago, Colin. I don't <laughs> right. know if I could tell you. There's a girl at the very beginning of the film who gets up, starts talking at the camera very oh, yeah. aggressively, you know, and all this, and we think she's going to be the main character. She's explaining basically what it's like to be a teenager right now, and then she gets killed by Cinder Hella. Then okay, and then you're like, well, okay, I guess but we're on to the next being person. So inconsequential to the rest of the movie. That's what makes me crazy. But her name, <laughs> Taylor, whatever the fuck her mm-hmm. name is, comes yeah. up a lot through the movie. So that's why I'm like, okay, so they the just the idea that she her murder happened the rest of these kids are aware that this murder happened but they don't really seem to give a shit although Uh, the killer then starts angling toward riley i guess what i thought when 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 she got killed in the in the very first act that is so quick um is like you know the beginning of the nice guys when the porn star gets murdered in the car accident and like that's the inciting incident for the whole movie Mm -hmm. kind of Hey, I know how movies go, so I assume this is going to be the inciting incident for the rest of the movie. Not really. Yeah. Not really. It's no. Largely inconsequential. Inconsequential. It's basically right. just yeah. to set up that there is a killer yep. killing kids, and right. to give you a fake out because you know, in in this movie's amount of you know screen running time, those first three minutes are basically you know the equivalent of a whole other movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it just went and squished it down. Mm-hmm. Into three. But that's the movie minutes. I want to see, though. I want to see version? the. the, the I want to see the slash. <laughs> yeah, no, I want to see the slasher movie. That's right. what I was sold on. I'm the told slower version a- of the first th- three minutes. Yeah, of the movie. yeah. It's it's an identifier. It's just like well. Uh, this is what you're going to get for the rest of the movie. Kind of like this is, if not story wise, like uh, uh, structure. Mm-hmm. This is what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. It's going to be real quick, mm-hmm. and uh, shit's going to happen. And it's just going to be like, whoa, that happened. Yeah, there it is. But it isn't a, really a slasher movie, uh, and no, it kind of not. flies no, off not. the rails at some point when uh, all of a sudden the uh, high school bully. Whatever the tough guy, the jock, yeah, challenges the, uh, the uh, you know the Josh Hutcherson character whose name I can't remember, even though they said it like a hundred times. Clapton, like, Clapton, Clapton. Clapton. Cool kid, Get it? Clapton. He likes music, guys. Director really <laughs> likes music. Did you know? Yeah, Clapton. <laughs> and uh, he challenges him. More like like Crapton. <laughs> this kid at some point like starts. There's, this is a movie full of uh, uh, tangents and asides, and every character it's has an like uh, whatever the full title that says like the the lonely. Uh, tragic history of this character. And you go right, back there are titles see, in this movie. Yeah, title cards. And this kid, like, uh, was like, born uh, possibly of aliens or something. I can't remember. He spits up acid blood. His shit. He got yeah. He's he's, he's got, got red he's, eyes. He's got the, and, well, he's got the the Goldblum fly vomit where he's just like I had to break down my food to suck it back up. And mm-hmm. he's he's got that problem apparently and wings. And, and like, it's not a huge amount of real estate that we spend on this, but it like. The w- where it comes in in the movie just like dis- I can't believe I'm going to say this about this movie disrupts the flow it's for a disruptive. little bit but like the, this whole movie is disruptive well, it's, it's, um, it's all about disrupting its own flow yeah. when that happens because that's like the thing where you're like what the fuck you know like is this a dream is this the way that is he psychotic and this is the you know because he even says like this is the way I remember my upbringing oh. you're like is this the movie you know taking a little detour or is this actually happening and it breaks up the quote unquote pseudo realism. <laughs> and I mean, again, <laughs> this movie takes place in its own universe, but yeah. at least it seems to have like, you know, uh, a consistency for the first however long it is, 45 minutes before it just goes off and like, okay, now there's going to be aliens and UFOs and guys turning into monsters and time traveling bears. I know. I, I... A kid is working the entire way through oh. the movie to make a time machine. Yeah. Which it turns out he's making a bear into a time machine. Toshiba? The school mascot. Yeah, his name is Toshiba. His and the name joke is Toshiba. Is that, uh, Hitachi. He's, hilarious. he's Asian, so we're going to call him Toshiba yeah. and also call him Hitachi. Yeah. Thank you, Dane Cook. Dane Cook is in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Thank the Lord. 2011 Dane Cook, too. We're on the oh. downward slide, if not all the way at the oh. bottom at this point. Cook. Yeah. This, this Who's he in the movie? The principal. <laughs> He, he slash the inciting nerd, and that like that character clearly is leaning so heavily on the Breakfast Club principle that it's obnoxious. I, right. I, he, I'm there's not, almost he he he, he, he resisted doing the horns. He, he was he gonna. Per- he purposefully didn't say ruckus. <laughs> yeah, like he went and was yeah. like, "What is this 
noise going on here. It's like, yeah, you, but I don't understand ruckus. why you guys are holding this against the movie. The entire movie is a pastiche of like that's old, the problem. Of everything. That's old the, 80s and 90s. I movies. have a problem with all of it, <laughs> not just this one, but like you could tell that, like, at least they acknowledge it when they do it every time because a lot of times they're just literally name dropping things. But with Dane Cook's character, there is no acknowledgement that he's being the principal from the Breakfast Club. One of the kids should have said something to him about it. Should have yeah. made a fucking offhand comment. Yeah, but there's like but so they don't many like references and, st- and just in in. Uh, but know, yeah, that's the language of this movie. Even and like this the is the one time they choose the not to acknowledge it and all that yeah. stuff. That but there's a lot. There's a ton of it that I don't think is acknowledged. That's just like I mean, it goes by so fast. So there's fast lines mm-hmm. and stuff taken from other movies. Movies. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like almost all the dialogue. Like you could break it down probably like on a frame by frame basis and sure. go like that is from this or this is from right. that. You right. know, like and you catch yeah. it, but it's also in the moment and then instantly forgettable right, right after that. It. Right, Ex- like the opening well, yeah. credits. <laughs> what were the opening credits? Yeah, they were. Oh, it was like me? it was like the stuff in the hallway. Remember, like it was oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, the yeah. converse right. had yeah, his yeah. name on right, it because the- when the first the first one that pops up, I thought was funny because. Uh, Clapton's character skateboards by and on his converse it says Josh Hutcherson and I thought that was an isolated incident so I'm like oh that's funny that his converse say that but no it's the start of the credits for this movie mm-hmm. where they just keep showing it's very up Napoleon Dynamite credits yeah. somebody closes a locker and there's stuff you know yeah. credits written on it yeah. uh, somebody mm-hmm. throws up in there's a, a toilet and there's yeah. letters in the toilet then yeah. It, yeah and that yeah. kind of thing but they all uh, are there on screen for about a half a second half a second <laughs> Before oh the camera cuts away. So it's like, I don't know if the movie is establishing, legal. like, if this is what I worry about, right? Worry? I don't know. I wonder, right? You're going to have to tell me, listener, if this is, a, if you're a fan of this movie, like, if this is the way that it works. But, like, uh-huh. is this movie's, uh, um, I had a tension span, but it, the, uh, the, 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 the velocity that it delivers information to you mm-hmm. calibrated to a 16 year old's. Uh, mind like is this the way that the the 16 year old of 2011 uh you is know is able I mean, to process is able to process yeah and accept because things of that are being uh, shown to them yeah because of I fast you know cutting images you know uh or you're texting or you're multitasking basically you're, right you're trying to do like a bunch of things <laughs> it's at a once movie that's multitasking <laughs> yeah Holy well shit. the movie actually does multitask like oh, in yeah. some dialogue scenes where it became interesting to try and follow like there was a conversation in a bowling alley where two of the guys yeah. were talking about like yeah. how avatar is like the smurfs movie or something right. like that and there was actual plot details going on with the two girls in the back and it would cut back and forth like on a line yeah, real quick and you're like yeah, i don't have time to actually process nope. this is why i remember the avatar conversation and don't remember the other one right. that was happening at the same if time. If we do it like this, they'll have to watch it again to, to clear everything up. Yeah. So said the filmmakers. But my Little fear is know. that if this is the case, like as a movie, you don't have, since you don't have time to process it, right? Mm-hmm. That you can't retain any of it as like a fulfilling experience, right. you know? The experience you have is like you just got run over by a fucking, you know, yeah. truck going 120 miles an hour. And yeah. then there was a whole parade of like eight more trucks right behind that one yeah, just yeah, continuously yeah. running you over. Yeah. yeah. It's like for I remember 90 I got minutes. hammered by a truck, you know, or eight of them. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to remember what that license plate was, but then five other trucks ran me over. Yeah. Or is that just, is the movie telling us that we're getting old and you can't process it on the speed of like the 16 year old fan? I, I I really don't think that's the case. I think that this pace would be jarring for most people. I think so. It's got to be jarring for the filmmakers. I can't imagine they're anything like they, they got to be older than me. Can you imagine how long the script was for this movie? Oh. It, it had to have been like 120 pages, maybe it longer. Is- it is dialogue yeah. every through every moment of right. it. I don't know yep. if it pauses for action sequences. There's action happening, right. Right. but the dialogue is still right. running a long time uh, alongside it. So G- Gilmore Girls is famous for like fast talking dialogue and a lot of references, and that was a 45 minute uh, episode of television. And even their, Sorkin did that. Yeah. Their scripts would be 90 pages long for Ooh. a 45 minute episode of television. So that's why I'm like, this movie script had to have been twice as long as the runtime. Probably, yeah. Insane. Insane. God. Insane. Credit to the editor. 
No. Actually, no. Well, it <laughs> didn't I'll help give, anything. Give, but it credit. is an achievement it's, that they were able uh, yeah. to maintain that kind of breathtaking pace yeah. for whatever the 93 minutes that this thing ran. Um, Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Well, that's very true. <laughs> and the amount of camera work and the planning and the cutting sure. and like all that. I mean, because when I was th- I'm like, it was this whole thing storyboarded out. I mean, clearly this is a, you know, a mountain to climb for the filmmaker yes. who tried to take this on. Um, it's his passion project. Colin. Right. He wanted so he's been working labor on it for of love. Years. Oh, um, so even though there's a slasher subplot to this thing, you know, that's what's yeah. going on. There ends up being, I don't know how else to describe this without jumping to the end, because like Donnie Darko, there becomes this kind of time travel element um, where some of our lead characters have to actually go back into 1992 to prevent uh, the killer from, like, blowing up the world. This, like comes out of they have, nowhere. No, they have to prevent the killer from convincing someone else to blow up the world. That's right. Yes. Because the killer is different uh, from the bomb maker. That's true. Yeah. Well, the weird thing about this movie is that it's, and I mean, like, I was talking about Gilmore Girls before, and Gilmore Girls is absolutely guilty of the fact that it is this small town that everyone understands the same references and the same pool of references. They go to the same, like, five things over the time, oh, like, same five things all the time, it seems like. This movie is a small town where everyone understands all everyone's references, but it's, like, all of history of the 90s. It's not mm. even pop culture. It's just, like, history of the 90s and a little bit of 80s, too. And that's, like... That's a little bit harder for me to get a handle on, especially because like we're like they they didn't live through it. (laughs) Most of them didn't. They're all teenagers. Yeah, (laughs) this seems like a very they're very high. uh, What should we call it? It's a high. uh, It's a high reality that they're living in. Obviously, if you if you've seen the movie, it's just it's yeah, it's something else. It's a different. You know, it's not really reality that they're living in. Especially once people start uh, vomiting. Uh, you know the acid fly goo and, acid goo yeah. to digest whatever the fly, they're trying to the fly yeah. D plot in the movie. <laughs> oh, dear Lord, it really is a D plot in this movie. I, I enjoyed it because it's fucking. I weird. actually really liked it, and I was like, yeah, I like that guy. Yeah. from where he starts, he's just like I'm fucking turning into a fly, and then he's vomiting on shit. I didn't like how inconsequential it was. Right, I kind of <laughs> wanted more of that. That's the I, maybe that's the thing that is uh, is that a downside of this movie that certain things that they bring up become inconsequential it's the biggest downside of this movie to me. I think why, so. why am so i much, watching this there's so much in right there's so much introducers like well that's inconsequential why do i why are you trying why do I are care? you trying to make me care about this mm-hmm. oh pick us pick a lane dude pick a lane pick two I prefer, lanes even pick two narrow they, down to two which they don't do <laughs> until like maybe the last half hour of the movie is when they get like really focused uh, uh really eh. focused maybe slightly focused mm. like they they pick a, a goal to go towards and just which like time what? travel time travel and stopping a killer that's where they mm-hmm. decide to go yeah and well, that's as specific when, as it gets. When they come up with the idea to blow up the... So, yeah, I mean, what? You're going to destroy all time and space and all this other stuff because, I mean, that's obviously where you're going to go to in your sure. big science fiction movie epic. So your heroes have to travel back in time to stop it. A staple of, uh, you know, 80s fantasy of films, 80s, I suppose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Yeah, why Why did they not, like... There was, like, one passing reference to Back to the Future made by, like, a teacher but like they're like they're doing time travel and not referencing any time travel movies when they're referencing everything else they're doing. I don't know. Maybe that's better for them. Just like, oh yeah, you're referencing. Maybe so we don't hate them more. I guess or just like, oh, they're, refer- they're referencing that. <laughs> just like, oh yeah. Oh, of course this you is would the one time that. we're gonna ease off on references. This <laughs> movie is the fucking time right, travel. We got the time references. travel. Probably the most referenceable. Uh, event you could have in your movie, yeah, and they're just like, nah, we're not no. going to do it. No, that's where they showed restraint. Yeah, yeah in this was, movie, restraint. There, I don't remember any direct lifts from Terminator, the Time Machine, or Quantum Leap. Was there? <laughs> no, I'm no? saying they're I'm <clears throat> just naming the off future. time travel things of the yeah. 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 time. Well, bravo yeah. to them for mm-hmm. showing Slider. some restraint, <laughs> right? Sliders. Especially from that period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sliders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They would though. They dropped Free Jack. They would say sliders. I don't know what Free Jack is. <laughs> you don't you guys, need to know what Free Jack is. It's a terrible not. movie. It's a movie about a guy who goes back in time and takes over the body of somebody from the past. And that's what Free Jack so is. Quantum Leap. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it also happens in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they? Yeah. Okay. 
with Ioni and her mom, mm-hmm. right? Which is some weird play on Freaky Friday. Sure. How did they get? Ex- to, did they decide to do that? Yeah, the mom. It was the mom's idea. But how did they pull that off? Besides deciding to do it, was they that did, all it took? It was like a real quick thing. Of her mom was like, "So you're going to do this, and you're going to do this," and it went by so quickly. You could. But how did like, she like? How did they switch bodies? It's she like, explained it in that really quick yeah, montage. She explained, I think, that there was how somebody was working on a time machine. But that would have been the kid in detention. I don't know. See, it right. went so quickly. This is like a big spaghetti bowl of all sorts of different plot Many strands threads. Yeah. and film genres all looped together. The, Does that make your movie better if you just put everything the in the bowl? Sink? Yeah. Just put everything in there. And well, you know, you're you're eating this bowl of spaghetti. I'm going with your metaphor here. And you just pick up a thread and you just, you know, you suck it up and then we go with it. Here's my question. It's like, Does that yeah, make but you it's, good? it's like it, you grab a fork of all the threads and, and just, just shove it in your mouth all at once. So we get multiple mouth. threads and we're just like, mmm, some of this is tasty. Some of this is fucking plastic. Why is this in I don't here? Know. <laughs> <laughs> this needs more Parmesan. Oh boy, did some of this need more but Parmesan? They have the Parmesan. The parmesan comes in there too. It's a whole. <laughs> Which it's the a Parmesan. Meal. I I don't understand why this. So this director has his ten million dollars that he put into this, right? Why not make like a couple smaller films of each one of these things you want to do? Make your smaller slasher movie. Make your time travel movie. Make your Mean Girls like because body he wants switching this movie. To be some unique. But those could all be so much better filmed thing. separately. You could have like, and then maybe you get back why on the studio track. Michaela, maybe, why you know? film them separately when you can have them all in one? <laughs> why not put them all together? Yeah, he loves spaghetti. He was, he was the kid that made the suicide sodas and fucking McDonald's, <laughs> didn't he? Just like filled like, a cup up with uh, all uh, of them. He's just like, yeah, I'm mixing the orange soda and <laughs> coke. Fuck you. I don't think that he's <laughs> actually Dr. trying yeah. to go for like this. If he's aiming for, I mean, I assume right that he's not just making this for himself. Oh, I feel uh, like he is. Well, who else is this for? He's making it for, I think, like the teen audience. This is going to become another cult classic for a teen audience who's going to relate to the idea. So do I that- need to show this to teens to see if they get it? Oh, we well, need to do like a YouTube spinoff that, where we make teens watch this? We just have to ask. I mean, it was suggested to us. I assume, like, I don't know the ages of the people who did, but I assume that somebody saw this thought that it like spoke to them you know like mm-hmm. it's that generation's donnie darko right or was donnie darko okay. that generation's yeah. donnie uh, darko no no right. no, no. Donnie darko was earlier is. but it was but a movie that spoke to a generation i maybe. get what you're saying how <clears> dare <throat> you give it this and, <laughs> how dare you sir and so they re- but they spoke. remember it eight years later and are like you know what i still want to hear the saturday night freak show crew talk about this movie that means so much from my uh, high school or years. they just they know this will provoke us <laughs> They, this, I think they wanted could, to. We provoke could be us. being gaslit right now. Yeah. It's true. They could be yeah. gaslighting us. Yeah. I, I, think I think that's is what it. they're doing. <laughs> I think it's they're like, like they'll have reactions. Sean's going to yell right. about this. They will have reactions to this movie, so I'm going to make them watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. is what our audience is it, doing. because it's insane. It's insane, and maybe they're trying to make us go insane. But in order for maybe. it to Threw speak to a movie. generation, wouldn't they have had to go see it? And like I don't this like I don't know what the, yeah, the run of this movie, this movie was, but was this widely available for anyone to see? Like uh, uh, I think this did, is uh no. <laughs> I could see it I could see it hitting a festival circuit and people like booing it and then it like you never hear from it again. Like if you told me that's what happened with this movie, I'd be like, Yeah, I see that. Like, mm, no. No, yeah. not this movie. Like you ever hear about those screenings where like the critics have been watching movies for like days straight and they've just had it and they see one movie that like just irks them and they <laughs> snap yeah, they and they're just like, this is trash. And like, it's like booed. Dane Cook. <laughs> fuck this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I love, no. I love when the critics are at the end of the yeah. rope at the festival circuit and they can't yeah. take even like the slightest inconvenience in a movie. And that's why they always end up picking something out. That's like that one was different. See, I don't know. I can imagine this oh, movie this is different. made an impression. Impression, right on somebody sure and probably even probably you know festival audiences sure. you're watching a bunch of stuff probably my you know i i think it makes an impression because you know uh of its style its tone its subject matter maybe if you know i guess i'm an optimist right i'm assuming i'm going into it assuming that it's not just talking to the guy who made it. He's making it for like a group of, uh, you know, right. for that age group. That's, I guess, mo- you know, the model that I'm going into this uh, you would uh, hope. hypothesis yeah. with. If nothing else, you're hopeful. Yeah. 
And so they respond to it. And so at these uh, film festivals, that's why they remember it. And so then they have to track it down. They're like, you got to see this movie Detention Mm -hmm. because there's nothing else like it. This is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen in my life. Or it's interesting, if nothing else. Yeah, it's the movie that makes like mentions on the movie websites. It's like the shit we read today. And just like, we saw this at Fantastic Fest. It's something. Like if if nothing else, it caught someone's eye. And I kind of like it. I was actually, I was surprised to find out that the guy was as old as he was that he was 39 when he made it because like I that actually was about the right age oh see I feel I thought he would have been a lot younger yeah like contemporaries with the kids in the movie okay okay yeah. that's where I'm going yeah. with mm. why did you why did you think that though because like there was an immaturity to this movie that didn't speak like a 39 year old yeah. man yeah but that's <laughs> oh, why it I feels think, like uh, that's I why think, I, 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 I guess think that's the, the that seems like the distance to make something like this I think it didn't. That it, seems it, like the it, perfect yeah, right. If he was like, it didn't cl- speak closing with wisdom. Fifty, I'd be like, eh, you shouldn't. Either. This feels like eh, that guy didn't make this movie. But being like thirty nine, ah, it seems about right for this mm-hmm. movie to me. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it does because he lived through I, the shit. I he lived through the things well, he's all referencing be- at this point. I got that only because of the. Okay, well, okay. So it, it, it <laughs> did feel like he knew a lot about that time period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then as we're watching it, you guys are telling me like, yeah, but they did documentaries and this stuff. And you could just go and like, you know, an mm-hmm. astute filmmaker could write something that was a catalog mm-hmm. of all of these different, uh, you know, things. Mm-hmm. So from the writer's perspective, and I believe he did write and direct this, uh, you know, he's got this long knowledge, right, of all these pop culture references through back f- through 1992 at least mm-hmm. and beyond that right but at the same time the tone and the energy level and the just bizarre uh way that the movie's put together made me think that you know it feels like it could be uh, a guy just in you know film school or something mm-hmm. like this is his first movie yeah. i mean i think i ruined I it by totally telling you that. off the at the beginning it's like the guy is a music director music video director who spent his own money on it sure. if you didn't know that it it feels like immature and inexperienced you know like at least that's the, the vibe filmmaking? i get off of it like just like the attitude of the film the ad- okay the i would agree with you the, on that the, the attitude of no the, the film. attitude yeah. but i think that's he's accomplished as a like he's learned all this stuff in music video directing so yeah, he's made this he's really technically flashy. competent yeah, yeah. But, but the attitude is a childish attitude mm-hmm. oh i think that comes from having lived through i this feels like a lived through movie like he lived through that stuff i think there's you can look you can go back and like we said the, the they made so many documentaries where you can like uh view what happened through these eras the maybe late 80s 90s definitely up until mm-hmm. the 2000s and you can be educated by that but i f- this feels like he lived through that oh, just yeah, because there's like so it many it feels to me only that way because there's so there's so many references so where it's many like, and i'm not I I agree that, you know, you could go and find all of this stuff Mm -hmm. out on YouTube. Probably. You can watch all the documentaries. Yeah, you definitely can. You were talking about maybe in an alternate timeline. But But to me, it feels like everything feels like a caricature of that time. Not like that's why it feels inauthentic to me, because it's so over the top and Uh. it's so frequent and it's so in your face all the time. Like. It it's too much. It feels inauthentic because it feels like a caricature of everything. like Ready Player One. Yes, just like okay. that. That is a really good parallel oh. for this movie. I think. Oh, I don't know. Because that, but that movie is like crazy inauthentic because it is a bunch of people who never lived through that time. The characters, yeah, the characters in Ready Player One, right? Like the, not even characters. The whole world in Ready Player One has a is is permanently stuck in the eighties, even though it's like forty years in the future from it, now. Even in that regard, that gets complicated because we're looking at a person who made those films, who's referencing his own work, everything he also <laughs> made. Yeah, I think that's also a social case. I don't know if we can reference it that much because Spielberg was like, it's the snake is eating his own food <laughs> at yeah. that point. Yeah, so I, I I don't know about that one, but it feels like he's but, I mean, at the, the right it's age. Based on a book though that is just like that. Well, that's very true. You but he, uh, uh, based on what I know about the movie, I have not seen it, so take that for what you will. But based on what I know about the movie and what the book there is certain things that are changing it that yeah but that general core thing of sure oh yeah culture no, is obsessed with the 80s that is that is definitely exactly the same. um but no i think 39 kind of feels like the right age to look back at a time that you lived through and can remember it 
because I fucking lived through the 90s, but I, you know, and I remember certain amounts of it, but I'm also like, 39 feels like the perfect time to look back and remember the 90s, because I'm fucking 32, and like, I lived through it, but I don't remember a lot mm-hmm. about it, so I don't know, I feel like he's the right age to look back at it and say something about it. So it feels like a lived through thing to me, and that may just be me. But it's also strange that the theme of the movie then does seem to be by the end of it, you know, <clears throat> you have one character who's going back in time to try and destroy the past. Yep. The entire town, apparently, all the characters in the movie, or at least the majority of them, reference and, you know, lean on the past. They all have access, I suppose, to the, the 90s is very much part of the present like the, the memory of the 90s is still very much part of their present yes. world their whole 20-11. prom is 90s theme <clears throat> right there but are the a lot idea, of overalls worn in this movie but the idea of the movie even in the plotting right so maybe the theme and all this and it, it is spoken by uh riley i think mm-hmm. by the time mm-hmm. we get to the end is that uh you basically have to in order to live the best now you have to forget the past you have to blow it up you know you well, have it's to also said by clapton as well Okay, well, one of them yeah. or both of them say you know yeah. something to that effect. So it feels like the, the message of the, the movie. Yeah, but so the theme of the movie is like That's, the oh, anti. The, like the movie is like we're going to be this '90s time capsule of remembering all this stuff. This is me as a filmmaker, right? The writer, what's his name? Yeah. Uh, putting all of this stuff into it, beating my, you over the head with it. Even. And then my <laughs> argument to you by the end of the movie is that you Forget shouldn't that. be like me. You should jettison all of this, you know, this <laughs> nostalgia. So stupid. That you have. I hate it. I hate that. Uh, don't waste my time. <laughs> Get to the point quicker. That is kind of weird. I don't know. Is yeah. that it? Am I off? No, base I think here? you're right. Actually, it makes sense that that is the only thing that is going to make sense to me all night about this movie. I, I don't know. If- Anything's going to make sense to me about this movie, to tell you the truth. I'm just going to grab onto that because it's something I can grab onto. So. Yeah. Sure. I don't know what the point is. We're grabbing yet. at those spaghetti strings mm-hmm. right now. <laughs> yep. Trying to figure I out found what a meatball, I think. Trying to figure out what to eat. Yeah. Is there a meatball in here? <laughs> Jesus. Hmm. It, Turns out we were eating ravioli the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that says to And you. I told I was going to get a completely different type of cuisine right. in general. Right. I thought we were having tacos. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And they came here expecting Mexican That's food. <laughs> thought we were eating tacos, folks. Sorry. It's you weird. told us we were eating tacos, mm-hmm. uh, dear Brailler. Yeah. It'd be like if this guy invited me over for dinner. I was like, it's Taco Tuesday. And I'm like, all right, let's do this. And they come over and he puts down a fucking big, messy bowl of spaghetti. That's what happened. Well, okay. So conversely, how would you pitch this movie to some like, okay, so you're Oof. you're in the marketing oh. department okay. at uh, Samuel mm-hmm. Goldwyn or Sony Pictures. Sure, sure, puts sure, out, sure. And uh, you got to pitch this movie. To you, make me want to see oh, I saw it. this movie. You, you should buy it because here's the pitch. You got to you got to mention like the major things in it. You can't just say it's a slat like there's a, someone killing kids. You got to say and the only way to stop it is through time travel or something. Like that. You have to set up the other weird things that are going to happen. That At feels, least two of them. The serial killer thing <laughs> feels like the hook you can market it by. Yeah. And that's, like, exactly that's how you get did. people in. Is yeah. that there's, there is a serial killer. It's like, well, you can recognize this about it. There's right. a serial killer yes. who's killing people. Because nothing else is accessible. So we have the one thing that it was like, oh, somebody's killing teens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boom. Go for it. And that. I don't know. We could maybe say, so maybe you could say serial killer and time travel mm-hmm. in the same sentence. Sure. Yeah. But you can also add like UFOs and fly mutation fly dudes. things and right. all this. Right. Because like, you can't, I think, and this is my my question for those of you listening who haven't seen this movie <laughs> and are listening to us, there's no way to basically contextualize <laughs> like... It's a wild... Yeah, it just movie. sounds like it's all... Yeah. Put together. Although right. I do think that there is, by the time this movie actually does wrap up, it all these elements do seem to in the plot go from one thing to the other. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Like even like stuff that's set up at the beginning that I don't know if you know necessarily was supposed to be, but you know they there's a, a myth in the school about some girl who uh, you know like in in the nineties. Was having sex with the school mascot, right. which is a big surprisingly uh, bear. paid off. Yes, right, <laughs> right. But that's what I'm saying. It's like all these things that are thrown right. out. 
eventually coalesce and you're like, oh, that's what that was. Oh, because it ends up being her and the right. she went sure, back. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, so she's not having sex with a bear, but it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. If you put time travel in that description, then I know all bets are off. All then bets I know are anything off. Can, is possible and I'm going to see a bunch of weird shit if time travel is involved. You, but you just say slasher, then I'm expecting a pretty grounded, realistic movie. Right, yeah. Which this is not. time travel. Your your expectations are a lot different. So I assume if you were to pitch Donnie Darko to us, time travel would be time travel much, thriller. Yeah, it's time travel is a lot higher up there. But this one, the time travel doesn't really show up until the third act. So it could be man, we're saving that as a surprise. I don't know. It is such a jumble of uh, mm-hmm. it's postmodern as all hell. This is the postmodern movie. Cool. You have to live through modern (laughs) to get to this. What are are our other contemporaries for this movie? American Ultra, probably. (laughs) Fuck that movie. That movie wore me out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's. I got the same feeling. I was like, oh no, this is going to be just like American Ultra. It's just why is any of this happening, and why do I care? And well, that's the danger that you have, I guess, in the audience, right? It's like you're either going to because it switches gears. Like, you know, drastically as it switches between these genres. And it's not, I don't want to give you, the listener who hasn't seen this, the impression that, like, you spend some time on this plot line, and then suddenly it switches tones and all that for this plot line. No. It's all happening, like, at in once. the same it's scenes. At once. Yeah, it's all at and once. In shots, it changes. You, you know, you, you're following other. You are like, what's his name in the fucking. I lost all words just right now. <laughs> we, Holy shit. We have uh, no idea right. what you're talking about. Uh, no. Um, uh, the Watchman. Okay. okay. Dr. Manhattan. You are Dr. Manhattan and the Watchman at this point. As everything the viewer is, of this movie. Right, as the yes. viewer of this movie. Everything is happening all at one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you can't see all futures and pasts at once, but it's all happening to you or, at once. Or you're Doctor Strange seeing all possible outcomes right, at yeah, the same going time and seeing all possibilities. War, yeah. uh, there is only one out of 14 million in which you're going to maybe understand or like <laughs> yes, this movie, exactly. but uh, that's up to you. So maybe this you're movie the one. makes you seem like the master of the magista um, Except your brain can't comprehend it. Arts. Yeah, <laughs> what's the Doctor have... Strange the thing? Uh, what's he the master know. of mystic arts? There we go. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah, so unless you're Doctor Strange. So this yeah. movie is causing yeah. aneurysms. <laughs> I understand why Doctor Manhattan said "fuck y'all" went to Mars now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I totally. Like, get, I, you know, what? I think I, I feel might go for create him. my own people. Yeah, and he goes off, and yeah, yeah he's kind maybe, of a sympathetic character. Maybe we now. don't deserve after after this movie. Maybe we don't deserve to live. Did anymore. You guys ever read that comic book? I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. It would have been better if they dropped a giant squid at the end. Of yeah. <laughs> I would have been more for that, yeah. I would have been like, hey, at least it's a monster movie now. Ah, you know? yeah. At least everyone dies at the end. This is a weird sidebar that in a, in a show where we're talking about detention. Anywhere. But in the uh, talking about time travel, the scene in uh, in Watchmen where Dr. Manhattan like relives his past. Did mm. you get the impression in the movie that that was a flashback or it was actually happening in real time? Flashback. In the, because in the, the way he talks, he voiceovers over that. So I was like, it was flashback. Oh, I don't He's remember telling someone the story. I was all right. I don't remember. I when it comes to Doctor Manhattan, I, I if he's going back and flashing back to it, I imagine he's doing it at that moment. Yeah. So that was the thing that, that blew. That was one of those moments that like blew my mind when oh, I read yeah, the thing. No, I never yeah, really I, was that. that his past, present, present, future. Yeah, no, I imagine same, if he goes back to it, communicates yeah. that, that better, better than yeah. the movie does. Where it's like, yeah, I'm telling the story, and right. this is what happened in the past. Oh, now I imagine if he's telling something in the past, he's he's even if he is telling someone that story, that he goes there. Yeah, because it's always imagine, first person, right? I imagine mm-hmm. he's always there. It's twelve doing seventeen, it. yes. and I'm here, and this right. is the even in front of me. I think whether we believe it or not, he's there. Yeah, like that's. That's how he explains yeah. it. He's in them all the what time. A cool character. <laughs> I, I really like that story. I love Watchmen. Better so, stories. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, man, travel. you know, like I'm thinking about the Watchmen movie now, and I'm like, yeah, not that bad compared to like what have other you things seen you could be watching. The ultimate edition. I have the ultimate the, edition. I have, I have seen the full thing. I, I won it in bar trivia. I got the ultimate edition. It comes with the hardcover mm. uh, graphic novel. It flips open. has like a lenticular case. It takes up a fuck ton of shelf space. Very nice. But it's <laughs> it's pretty cool. That, and it has the, it uh, it the comics. Tales of the yeah. Black, the Black Freighter. Freighter. Yeah. Does, there's there's also one that comes with Tales from the uh, Under the Hood. Mm-hmm. That comes in there too. Tales, like, that no, but I don't, I don't think the they put that in the That's more interesting to me than the Black Freighter stuff. I know the Black Freighter 
Shredder relates more to like the actual story of man, of that going on. But I like Tales from Under the Hood. Mm-hmm. This one mm-hmm. is very good. So there's that. <laughs> Falling back in yeah. love with the Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. the Watchmen. <laughs> Should we pull the ripcord on this? I think and, uh, so. Okay. I think, uh, yeah, we're definitely bailing on this one <laughs> and floating back to Earth. This movie may have uh, required some time for us to digest it before we talked about it. Yeah, so don't write us your angry letters saying right, how yeah, we're we idiots and we don't understand it. Because yeah. you know, a week from now, you know, you have no. We should should we start a new segment where we just like update corner of the movie we watched the week previous and how nah. we feel about it. Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes I happens. feel way different. Mm-hmm. Well, wait before you tune out. We what, want so to you guys can all recommend the wraith now. Yeah, uh, the wraith. <laughs> yeah, we're coming back around on the wraith. Oh, bitterness. <laughs> I'm. I stand by that movie. <laughs> Just it's like a movie it, that lives better in your it, in your memory, it probably. Does. Than if I watched it again, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, this kind of sucks." But right now, in my you memory, it's a cool it. movie. I want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, it's cool. but we are going to listen. Uh, we're going to read some of your mail, and then we're going to go around the room and talk about uh, detention. What it meant detention. to each one of us. Uh, I keep before what we this movie's called. I know detention. the title is okay. stupid. It's because the title was like right up front, no logos, no nothing. It's like bam. Detention. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. All right. So uh, I guess to do this, we should probably summon our mailman, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. He looks completely bewildered. He must he must have caught a few yeah, seconds of this like, movie. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then a minute later, he comes shooting out of the middle of a magnetic uh, time travel bear. bear. Oh, do we get, is guy. it a, wait, is he it builds his own. or older Igor? Is it 1992 does, does Igor? Mes- 1992 Igor. Does he yeah. have he's got a disc man. Oh, he's got, yeah, he's got the Walkman <laughs> and everything. Yeah. Is that 1992? 1992. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Walkman disc before man. the tape. Yeah. Or after mm-hmm. the tape. There tape was the 80s. I had a tape one in 96. When did or, or I have to, uh, there's only one uh thing I can relate having a disc man to and it's when did uh Seals uh Kiss from a Rose come out? Well, that was like 94. That was okay, cuz I know I forever. All right, cuz I know I had a CD player then. So that's where I that's my milestone in which I base when I had a CD player. On. I'll have to show you guys my mom has this winter coat from when I was in middle school still <laughs> for whatever reason sure. and the inside pocket the inside of the jacket has a pocket specifically, specifically made, made for a portable CD player. Remember when they did that? And it's like, oh, a pocket for your CD player. But it even has like a, so it has like a, a thing that goes over to close the pocket, right? But then it has a little like perforated hole that you can string oh, your yeah? headphones See, through. now that's nice. cool. Perfect then, design what, what specifically you need for that. is one that actually you can, it's got the headphones like built into the yeah. lining. You, right, and, and it actually comes out, comes the, hoodie out the hoodie string. Yeah, yeah. So then yeah you just, exactly. And it's got a little plug, you plug in. Ooh. And then you can player. plug in the hoodie string yeah. when I, I remember those. When I was in middle oh, school. Oh, those exist? <laughs> no, people used serious? to string it through the hoodie. Themselves. Yeah. When I was in middle school, we yeah, used to I pay a they, kid to do that. Yeah. No, I Colin, did at some point, they made them. You plug it in, and then you take your hoodie strings and plug them into your ears, and those Shit. are your headphones. I think That's actually, a thing the future is now. <laughs> I may have actually invented that when I time traveled back to 1989. I can oh, that you didn't invent it because you are still here. <laughs> Eoni invented guacamole somehow. Guac. Guac. She just shortened the Word. Just shorten the word. Okay. That was so fucking. Just stupid. invented a word. You can't monetize. I'm here can you monetize right a now, word? Sean. Time travel. You can be wherever. The time travel doesn't exist, Colin. You want to get into How this do argument? Know? Doesn't exist. Doesn't yeah, we, exist. Yeah, we haven't had started loopering yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, so about uh, our movie Detention. Oh, yeah, we should probably tell people how they can get a hold uh, of us on uh, the Facebooks. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. By the Twitters. At Sat Freak Show. By the emails. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And the Instagrams. At Saturday Night Freak Show. Andrew John writes in about the movie Detention and says, this movie is insane. Yep. Mark Harrison writes in and says, this movie is something else. These are all accurate so all right, far. Yep. <laughs> Chris Keenan writes in and says, this is one of detention is one of the weirdest movies you'll ever see. And I know that's saying something, seeing that you guys have seen some weird shit. In my opinion, it borders on buckaroo bonsai slash incomprehensible at times. And then this ending hits and it's almost wrapped up in a beautiful bow and almost everything is paid off perfectly. Yeah. I mean, 
that I wish I would have read that before I <laughs> watched this movie because I feel like that would have put me in a better space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg says Detention is a slasher movie involving a serial killer, UFOs, body swapping, a riff on Better Off Dead. Breakfast Club and Dirty Dancing homages, Steven Seagal versus Patrick Swayze fight, callbacks to Mean Girls, Clueless, and Donnie Darko, and a time traveling alien grizzly bear. What more could you ask for? Question mark. It, Question mark. It sounds so much cooler when you say it right. like that. That it sounds, sounds that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh that's right. I forgot that the Canadian vegetable people actually Okay, never mind. Um <laughs> The Canadian guy. I like him oh, also. Oh, the Canadian guy. We didn't oh, yeah. even mention. I, I kind of like the Canadian yeah, guy, actually. The Canadian guy. Gord, I love yeah. Gord. <laughs> why he wasn't why he wasn't Gordo, which feels more like <laughs> Canadian, but whatever. Gord. I like Gord. Yeah. I'm down for Gord. And his, his debate, se- oh, yeah. debate scene was awesome. Great. His Absolutely defense great. of uh, yeah. meat eating. Bravo. Bravo, mm-hmm. Gord. That was fantastic. Why do people hate chickens? Because they blow them into little pieces <laughs> and send them as chicken Popcorn nuggets. Popcorn chicken. <laughs> I only oh. eat young you meat. <laughs> you only eat cow nuggets. That was, that oh, was great. That's wonderful. Absolutely uh-huh. wonderful. Uh, about last, uh, sorry, last week you listened to our best of the year uh, episode. But before that, we did one on New Year's Evil. And Amos Martinez writes in and says, I don't understand why this movie never got a sequel. I mean, it's a bad movie, but I think it's a fun bad movie. Yeah, why are we not following the creepy son? We all agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I mean, know, come on. he had yeah. a lot of things going on. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 he was kills her at the end, right? Uh, 80. 80? Yeah. Oh, there's there's a whole decade in which we could have got a sequel to that. Which yeah. would have, oh, come on. I want to I want to see his journey with evil. his mental illness. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Uh, Novato. Eviler. Eviler, yeah. Um, Novatu Judoka says, I Mr. watched New, New Year's Evil since you guys were watching it. I feel I would have liked it more if I had not guessed the twist at the end, 15 minutes into watching the movie. Oh, bravo. Wow, you, good sir. for you. We, bravo, you were bravo. way ahead of all of us. Yeah, I was not there with that one. As I said, hashtag be like Sean. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'll take that. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, be like me. All right, so. Now we're going to try and compose ourselves. After <laughs> Deep breaths. Watching Usa. Detention. And we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of the movie. Colin. Sorry, what- Colin, what did you think about uh, this movie we watched tonight called Detention? And does it deserve that name? Go. <laughs> What's the metaphysical meaning to the word detention? In Stop the it. Case- Stop it. Of this movie is it does it have play something to the theme? Don't do that much work. Are, they, are the characters <laughs> detented in this movie? Yeah. Detained, <laughs> in this movie? detained. I think is the word. Yeah, detained, I'm going with detented. <laughs> All right, are, Michaela, dude, don't it, stop me when I'm making up words. Detented, detented, feels, detented, detented feels better for this movie. <laughs> They're detained in the they're 1990s. Detented. They're detained in the uh, the memory of the they're past. They're detained in their own minds, yeah, that's man. Right. And they have to break out of it, literally. <laughs> and, oh my God, this movie is a brilliant masterwork. I don't know why you guys don't understand that it's unplug, one of... Unplug. There was, so unplug, 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 there was uh, the, the graduate... <laughs> There's like uh, the graduate. Oh, no, sorry. Wow. Before that, probably there Stop was it. Rebel Without a Cause. This is brought out next level sarcastic oh, column, boy. and I love the it. Graduate no, you fight can only club go so far, and then we, detention. We're just no. Well, the grad- I will. Wait, did you right. say Rebel Without a Cause, the Graduate Fight Club, and detention? Yeah, yeah. I will edit this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I. Uh, <laughs> I th- I enjoyed the movie. I guess is what uh, you know. I did actually like it. Um, however. You know, I since I saw it before, I know that it fades. You know, it fades from your memory. It is a movie that you enjoy while you're watching it, or you don't, as you're going to hear from probably uh, my co-host here in a little bit. Uh, you don't know me. But I enjoyed it while I was watching it. it. It was funny. It was a it was a very alive movie. You know, I mean, I guess that's the thing about it. It does kind of feel like a singular beast. I mean, we're we're comparing it to other movies, and it's referencing other movies. But I have never actually seen one put together like this one. And you know, while I was along for the ride. Uh, it was entertaining. I was at more entertain. I was never bored. You know, I mean, I guess that's the thing. I didn't check out of it to the point where I was bored. That is the big um, sin. Although I think Sean's probably right there. Somewhere around the detention scene, 
which is when the third act plot actually in, engages. Uh, I think maybe if it had gone too much past that, then I would have started to lose it. Um, but that was when it actually like started coalescing. I'm like, okay, we're heading toward an ending. Um, it's not a perfect movie, obviously, and it's plot and it's structure. It's trying to do something uh, that's different. Maybe it's trying to make a comment on uh, teenage culture and the speed at which information is, you know, being processed now and the, the access to uh, like a digital memory that, that kids have today. Um, we'll never know. <laughs> we'll never, yeah, <laughs> we'll never know. Um, but it kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I enjoyed, like I said, the experience of watching it, but I think as a film, you're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lose it again, you know, because there's no dramatic weight to it. It's all kind of, um, it's not like cotton candy, but you know what I'm saying? It's like ephemeral. It melts away. Oh, you can say cotton, cotton candy. Yeah. It's a good way to describe it. Yeah. yeah. Just like, ah, oh. <laughs> yeah. sounds really cool in theory. Right. And you can eat a lot of it, but it's just going to evaporate in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the carbs of the spaghetti too. You eat spaghetti, and a couple yeah. hours I'm, later, you're I'm starving. I'm glad you came back to it because I'm totally coming back. Really hungry, hungry, I'm we? totally coming back to the spaghetti in my wrap up. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, ultimately, surprisingly, I would recommend uh, that you see Detention uh, just to see if it's your thing or not. I mean, it's a uh, it's a wild ride. It. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else. You sound really enthusiastic about your recommend there, Colin. <laughs> How enthusiastic I am. I mean, it's an exhausting experience. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I re- <laughs> even and then talking about it is also exhausting. You know, just yeah. trying to like put it all together again. It is it's designed to be absorbed or not even absorbed. It passes right through your brain to yeah. the uh, you know, it's a visual or it's an experience. Uh, I imagine that, you know, if you watched it over and over again, and maybe some of you have, that oh, you can pick you? out the, yeah, but I think a lot of stuff like checks out in little visual sure. sight gags that are happening sure, 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 sure. as characters move off to the side and stuff that's going on in the background. Cause there were a couple I caught toward the end that I couldn't even tell you what they are now, but I was like, oh shit, they just paid this off that happened you know, like 20 minutes ago. So, uh, and that tells me that like there was some care given to it by the filmmaker it's not just slap dashed everything that's in there i think you know is there for a reason so this is a very specific uh thing that he's doing so um yeah i don't know i say uh check out detention sean what'd you think <sighs> i think you're right it doesn't it's definitely not slap dash uh i think there is um if if only clear to the filmmakers of this movie there is definitely a purpose to everything they're doing in this movie. Um, it comes at you so very fast in this movie, and it's... I, I don't know. I had thoughts before you said the slapdash thing, and now I forgot them all. Oh, uh, I thought it was the spaghetti three. It, well, well I, I, I said that, and I was actually not going to come back to the spaghetti thing. Um, it's, it's too... I don't know. It's too much. I... Uh, it's hard. I don't think I can. I, I I can't. I can't do it because there's not. Are you overwhelmed? Is that yeah. is an overwhelming? It's, it's an overwhelming, overwhelming movie. Did we break you? Are you broken? Probably. Right now? I don't know. I, f- <laughs> I feel like it's an overwhelming movie. I don't. Um, there's there's just too. Uh, there's just too much to it. I don't think there's enough. It's not satisfying at any point. Um. I don't. I don't. I don't think I. I can't recommend it because it is. I remember it now. It's. It is a movie of. It's a movie of the exact moment you're watching it, like right in that very second, and that's the. I think the only time you can totally appreciate it, but like I'm out of that now, and so I. I can't. I can't recommend it because there's. It does a few things like. Pretty good. Like there's, I was entertained by the movie. Like you said, not boring at all. I was entertained. You were hating on the movie though. Like while we were watching. Yeah, you were. Oh yeah, no. But but I uh, did you enjoy the experience of watching the movie? I I not. You're overthinking it, man. I I did not enjoy it more than I did not enjoy it. Got that. He, he, he did not enjoy did it more, more than, than he did I, not enjoy it. 
I did not enjoy it more than I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. It, I'll, I'll, it's, a, it's a movie. So that, that sounds positive. <laughs> right. It, it's not. No, it's not. It's the opposite. I did not enjoy it more than I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Start over. It is It is a movie um, of the moment you're watching it. Now, it, as entertaining as it may be in that moment, sure. Um, you're being just like this movie and not committing to a feeling. It, it's not. It doesn't feel like satisfying at the end of it. It, it's not that's how the movie made me feel I don't know but I, I don't I can't recommend it because it also it feels like like we said I'm exhausted at the end of this movie mm-hmm. and I didn't I don't think it's worth the trip to be as exhausted as I was to go through the movie that I did didn't feel like it was worth it at that point <sighs> whether you, I don't know whether you want to go through that I don't know it's up to you I, I don't think I can recommend it I don't I, I can't imagine telling someone they should sit through this movie to get what they get at the end of this movie. And, and I think that's it. It's not worth sitting through it to get what you get at the end of it. So I don't recommend detention. Michaela, may we never speak of this movie ever again. <laughs> I know I say this a lot, but this is the most I've ever meant it for any movie. This movie is incomprehensible. Every single thing about this movie is incomprehensible. I, I, I'm i sorry to the movies that I've said that about before because <laughs> at least I could follow something. Liar. <laughs> it, this movie is... I, I don't I don't ever want to watch it again. <laughs> I really oh, don't. Oh, no, I will never, it's, never watch this again. <laughs> it's exhausting, and it's not even... The exhaustion isn't worth any of the payoffs. Like, no. there, there's... it's It doesn't deliver 100% on any of the stories it's trying to tell in a way that's satisfying for me. Um... I, the the famous passion project strikes again like this this dude's love might be you know this might be his favorite thing he's ever done but you know hollywood's not <laughs> isn't knocking for a reason i think that there like i really wish he just would have divided up his 10 million dollars into a bunch of smaller movies of these stories he wanted to tell because i think that could have just make one slasher Make one time travel movie, make one teen teen drama, teen comedy, teen black comedy, whatever you want to make it. Um, there's nothing to grab onto. There's nothing to kind of write yourself or ground yourself in this world. Everything feels fake and fabricated and is just like a, a construction of um, furthering the story. Like everything seems like it exists just to keep you moving forward and none of it really matters. And I just... I don't understand the point of this movie. I don't understand what he's trying to say. I don't understand what I'm supposed to take away from this other than I, I've i never seen anything like that before, which isn't a great thing to say about a movie, usually. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't recommend it. I can't, I can't imagine anyone I would know that would enjoy watching this movie. Like, I think at first they might enjoy it, but once they got to the end, I don't think that they would enjoy it. So, no. Hard, hard pass. Yeah, curious. Everyone, everyone's coming out exhausted at the mm-hmm. end. Of this I'm curious. What did you guys think? I don't know why this suddenly came in. What would you think of Scott Pilgrim versus the World? Oh, we've talked about. It. I, we got asked one time, like, what movies do we hate that everyone else loves, yeah. and that's mine. I yeah. hate Scott Pilgrim. I hate Scott Pilgrim. I, hate that movie. I, I really like Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, yeah hate I really it. They do hate it, but it, but it's also hate the pace of that movie a more, too. It's a slower, clearer narrative than this movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. get what you're saying, but like there's, mm-hmm. and again, there's a, there's a lot more to that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why I'm kind of surprised that I, I would prefer this one over Scott Pilgrim. You prefer the world. this one yeah. over Scott Pilgrim? I hate that. I hate that movie. I hate, I, yeah, I, hate I did both. not hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. That's why right. I'm like, but wow. why? Why? Um, yeah. I'll have to work on that one. Yeah. Right? I, I don't think, think so. A, I'm yeah. just founded. Yeah, just some <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, this conversation is going to happen off mic. Yeah. I think. Unless, well, unless you vote for Scott Pilgrim within the next, uh, within the next. Oh, you can't anymore. You're That's done. right. We picked him. Uh, yeah, we it's also want to give a special shout out. Sorry, we waited this long uh, to the end of the show. I meant to say this earlier, mm. but uh, <laughs> so we keep on talking about like you know we've got the uh, the wall of fame is uh, you know whenever a actor or sometimes a director. Uh, has been featured on one of our film, uh, one of our episodes, more than three times. Right. Or three times is the magic. Hopefully, number. predominantly, <clears throat> but yes. If you've been on the show three times, actors and directors, uh, we'll put you on the wall of fame. And until today, it's very special. The Sylvester Stallone Wall of Fame. The, yeah. <laughs> it, 
the, 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 but the tweets, he should be we named found out there's someone. people gaining on him. Uh, he's on the <laughs> I'll wall. I'll keep him ahead. Don't seven worry. Seven times. You know how we know that? Because a listener. Somebody did the work. Jason Madsack actually went. So it used to be like Bravo. figurative wall. Thank you. But yeah. he actually went and tracked down every movie that we've watched and every person who has been on this wall where we made discoveries about people we didn't know were on the wall. Yeah. Like we were talking about Richard Mall yeah. on uh, what episode was it that he was, I wasn't chopping mall. It was, uh, what was he just Wait. on? We He was in, uh, oh, uh, sidekicks. And sidekicks. He was in sidekicks. And we're like, yeah, he's just about to be on the wall. That guy has been on like four movies or something like that <laughs> that we've done. Yeah. And we found, we keep on saying that Sylvester Stallone, you know, is the, he built the wall. He's on yeah. top of the wall because Michaela he's climbing keeps the wall. He's picking the his, wall. uh, <laughs> His movies. It turns out, <laughs> yes, indeed, he has been featured on seven films that we've uh, that we've done. But it was interesting to go through it and see, you know, uh, and discover, you know, all these folks who were like, "Oh shit, minor bit players mm-hmm. that, you know, like the guy from Intruder or whatever who's been on three <laughs> Sam Raimi movies." Like, oh, well, he's on the wall. So yeah, now we actually is, have the, a document. Yeah, <laughs> this is the quantity over quality. Uh, uh, Hall of Fame wall oh, yeah, that yeah, we're yeah. talking about, by the way. Yeah. This is just if they're in the movie. Like yeah. Paul, Paul Dooley. I would be a little more discerning, but again. I don't know. These there's This seems pretty legit. Like, but, well, like sure. I mean, Paul, he Paul did Dooley include there. Renee Estevez. Paul Dooley yeah. has been in uh, oh, Strange Brew, which we did, Monster in the Closet, <laughs> and My Boyfriend's <laughs> Back. Who else would have put that together? I know. Uh, we have amazing fans. Only Mr. Madsack. Yeah. So thank you so much for your hard work. This like really means a lot. We've been flipping through. Yes, it is here. It, and, it is constantly yeah, we have a here physical to keep copy. track of. We so should leather you. bound it, you thank know, make like a nice, you, you know. Like, go ahead. Well, no, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tech and we're going to put, put it, it on, on the wall. wall. <laughs> right. Boom. Yeah. It's going to go on a clipboard yeah. and we're going to put it on a nail. <laughs> but this is seriously, guys, the amount of work that went into this is it has to be insane. Yeah, it takes a little research. I, I mean, when I when I pick a movie, I'll look, I'll do like a brief like mental scroll through right. and be like, uh, does this put this person on the wall? And like, that's the most I yeah. put into Let's it. Put it this so. way. I'm not going to do the research. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Colin is per se. I think- would if I had the time. Yeah. I would have. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I have the time. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so thank you. But now, now I have a reference of who now I need to, to watch out for right. so yeah. I can keep Stallone at the top. So I need to like uh-oh, highlight uh-oh. who's gaining on it. That's right, because so Dick Miller <laughs> is right behind him. There's like there's several people, I think. Oh, yeah. At six. Dick Miller is good. Um, all right. So next week, we are continuing the uh, month of viewer choice. A listener choice. It should have been. I did. I put viewer, viewer choice trailer. on that. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Feels like they're. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we're watching a movie that was chosen uh, by you, by you, and it is you. What are we watching next week? Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> this saves, like I said before, this saves me from having to bring it myself. Oh wow! Because well, I probably would have at some point. Okay, this is. I think of the four movies, this is the one I have not seen. <laughs> you so, have not really? seen this? No, I haven't seen oh Super my Mario God. Brothers. Yeah, I missed the whole like <laughs> Super Nintendo era. Really? This yeah. this movie has nothing Nintendo? to do with like, not like it. nothing to do. Oh, with okay, all. so you're saying four re- except for that it uses Nintendo guns. <laughs> oh, it's it's, it's it, so fun. It's nothing like the you know, yeah. We'll all get right, into so it. So for it's, reference, I don't have to actually go back and play. No, no, no. If no, anything, that will confuse you and make it a <laughs> yeah, worse experience. No, no, no. It's gonna be. There's two plumbers. Is it King Koopa? That's it. They Stop will, right there. They will include everything you need to know from the movie, okay. which is not much. I can't wait. It's a bomb. I am looking forward to this next week, right here on the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.